Hello and uh, welcome to this session. My name is Anton Todorov. I am integration developer at uh, Stove Pool Storage. Uh, here I will present a setup that, that became uh, an integral part of the Stove Pool integration, but uh, also could be used as a standalone setup. So let's begin. First, uh, why controlling the deployment XML is needed? Uh, LibVirt is a permanently evolving project, so new features are permanently introduced. Also, the default OpenAVU configurations may not be optimal for some use cases, so small tweaks uh, could be needed here and there. And uh, with changes in the configurations, it is possible to improve the performance of the virtual machines. Another reason is uh, better compatibility with uh, the storage system. For example, the disks located in the system data store in Open Nebula are configured uh, as files by default. And there is uh, no options to change this in Open Nebula, so we need the solutions to work around this issue to have a deeper integration with uh, Open Nebula. The third point is that uh, in Open Nebula, the domain XML is generated by the core service named LAMD, and uh, the changes in this core are usually considered as uh, major changes that uh, will be released uh, in the next uh, version of Open Nebula. So it will take some time for a few features to be implemented uh, and released in the upstream open nebula. And first, uh, let's uh, briefly note the default process of virtual machine deployment in open nebula. The deployment XML that is generated by the open nebula core service is sent over SSH uh, to a deployment script that is executed on the KVM host and uh, which uh, starts the virtual machines there. And uh, this uh, setup could, could be changed by adding an uh, intermediate step that uh, receives the deployment uh, XML file collect some additional data regarding the virtual machine from Open Nebula and run some helper scripts located in a predefined location on the front end. Each uh, helper script will parse the provided XML files and uh, alter the domain XML file depending on the predefined conditions that uh, could be found in the virtual machine data gathered by gathered from open nebula. Finally, the changed uh, deployment uh, XML will be passed uh, to the original deployment file on the KVM host for uh, execution and uh, deployment of the virtual machine. Uh, to enable the local executions of the deployment script, uh, there is a need to, uh, to have a change in the configuration of the one the service by adding uh, additional argument uh, to the configuration for the KVM uh, driver in Open Nebula. And of course, uh, the Open Nebula service must be restarted for uh, changes to take uh, effect. In the remaining of the session, I will present to you some of the changes that are possible using uh, this setup. Let's uh, begin. As uh, already mentioned, the disk definitions related to the system data store are defined as files in Open Nebula. Here I'm talking about the contextualization uh, CD-ROM and the volatile disks. 
as you can see in the generated by open media configuration the volatile disk is defined as a file and uh, helper script uh, will check that the data store driver used uh, for this virtual machine for this disk is provided by a store pool and uh, domain xml configuration will be changed to represent uh, a block device instead uh, here you could notice that the result in xml is with a method order of elements and uh, different quoting uh, this is because the helper scripts uh, are, that they are using are written in python and the elementary module there is uh, rearranging them but uh, the resulting uh, xml is totally valid for uh, libvirt Another interesting example is uh, the PCI pass-through configuration of the virtual function uh, network controller. We are using this uh, functionality in our internal lab uh, for the internal testing of the store pool development and continuous integration. The assigned uh, MAC address to the network controller is configured during the boot of the virtual machine via the contextualization scripts inside the virtual machine but uh, what uh, we should do if uh, the contextualization is in the virtual machine is not uh, possible or is not working for some reason the solution is to use uh, the other possible configuration for uh, NIC uh, pass-through of virtual function interfaces uh, provided by libvirt. Here we use the interface element uh, of type uh, host dev, which has a VFIO as a driver and the MAC address is extracted from the provided XML data for the given virtual machine. And uh, in this configuration, when the virtual machine boots, it already have the MAC address already defined by libvirt. There is no need for additional changes in the virtual machine by the contextualization scripts in this case. Another interesting uh, case uh, is uh, adding uh, SMBIOS information. This example is uh, taken from an open issue in the Open Media project at uh, GitHub. In brief, uh, SMBIOS configuration is needed to provide the system product element to be a specific string. Uh, so a helper script is uh, written that uh, is triggered to when a custom variable is defined in the user template section of the virtual machine. The specifics in the variable definition could be found in the documentation of the integration. I mean, uh, what other elements could be added to this uh, variable, what other variables are supported for the SMBUs uh, configuration and uh, so on. And uh, when uh, I'm talking about the user template, uh, here is a screenshot of the um, configuration of a virtual machine in Sunstorm. The custom variable is added uh, in the virtual machine attributes that are visible at the bottom of the page. These variables uh, could be protected uh, via open media configuration, so only the members of the one admin group could uh, change uh, the values. For this, you should see for uh, the VM protected attributes uh, configuration in the open media documentation. So, when executed, uh, the helper script uh, will alter the domain XML for the given virtual machine, defining the 
CC info element and enable enabling it in the OS section in the domain XML. Inside the virtual machines, you could use the DMI decode tool to observe the provided data. And uh, well, if uh, someone wants uh, the opposite uh, to hide uh, that the virtual machine is, is on uh, KVM, there is an uh, option in LibVirt for this tool that uh, could be used uh, and uh, triggered conditionally again using uh, predefined uh, custom attribute in the virtual machine definition. Uh, other example is uh, related by for the performance uh, of the virtual machine. The, a recent uh, open nebula version support uh, multi queue to be added for the virtual SCSI controllers, but uh, it is not clear what value um, administrator should uh, select for a given virtual machine. In the Red Hat documentation, there is a mention that uh, the value should uh, match the number of defined uh, virtual CPUs and uh, our tests provided that uh, this is indeed the optional, config op uh, optional configuration for optimal performance. Uh, this value could be set in the virtual machine template in Open Nebula, but it is up to the administrator to keep the the rule apply it, I mean the rule to have uh, the number of queues uh, matching the number of virtual CPUs. And uh, also it is uh, relatively easy to make an error there, leading to a sub-optional configuration for the virtual machine. And uh, what could be done with uh, this uh, solution? Uh, well, um, a helper script that uh, enforces the rule tra transparently sets uh, the number of queues to match the number of vCPUs uh, without need for uh, administrator uh, intervention in this uh, configuration. And uh, so, with these uh, few examples, uh, I show case uh, technique uh, with which uh, everyone could configure the KVM by their needs uh, without touching uh, the code uh, of the Open Nebula core. And uh, this is linked uh, to the related documentation that is part of the Storko integration with Open Nebula. Thank you and uh, happy hacking.